Hi guys, today I'm going to go over something that is painful for all system administrators and that is going through system logs. System logs have thousands of lines of code and when you're having a server hanging or hardware failing, you're trying to find that one line of code, that one line of error message in your syslog that's going to tell you what's going on, it can be really time consuming. You're sitting there with some advanced grub command trying to figure out what's going on. So why not set up a central repository for all your logs with a great graphical user interface. So I'm talking about Nogulus Log Server. It's something I've been using for a long time now. And you can start out absolutely for free and build out from there. And it's a great way of putting all your logs into a single location. Then having advanced search features and a nice graphical user interface for you to use or your manager to use. And it makes your life just that much easier trying to find what's going on with your system. So I'm going to go ahead and do a step-by-step -step instructions on how to set it up and add some clients. And it's actually the fastest install you'll ever have to do. You can set this up in just a few minutes. So just keep watching. The first thing I did was have a fresh installation of CentOS. So you can install this on a physical server or a virtual machine. Nagios log server should work perfectly either way. Um, Nagios log server actually comes with a really great scripted install that actually works extremely well. So we can go ahead and use wget and download it from the Nagios website, assets.nagios.com slash download. And again, this will be in the notes below. You could also use a browser uh, to download this. It doesn't have to be the wget command if you're not comfortable with it. So once you download it, you're going to have this compressed file. So we'll go ahead and uncompress it. We're going to use our tar command, xzvfz. <laughs> And we're going to go ahead and press it. And in that directory that we uncompressed, there's going to be an executable, a full installer, which is a script. It's going to go through the script and configure our system for us. It's actually really easy to do. Um, so Nagio Server is a combination of a few different products called the Elk Stack. I'm not going to go into that right now, but just know that it's actually something very commonly used. And it includes a few different very popular products for doing log servers. So again, the scripted install will download all the packages we'll need. It'll set up the firewall, do any configurations to SC Linux that we need as well. And once we're done with that, it's actually really simple, runs really great. It gives you a website to go to. That's the local host IP address and then slash Nagios log server. And then from there, we can do the rest of our setup through a browser. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a browser. You can use any browser. So the browser I choose here is just the normal Firefox browser that comes with CentOS. Um, you can also use Chrome. These are the two best ones I like to use. From here, we're going to determine what kind of installation it is. So Nagios log server is great because you're able to um, start with a single server, a single log server, and build out. Each of them are referred to as an instance. So if you're doing a new install, is this your first log server? We're going to click new install, but then if you're adding it to a cluster for load balancing, high availability, some kind of fault tolerance for your log server environment, you can go ahead and click add instance to an existing log server configuration and add it to a cluster, which is really great. So you can start out with the free version, which I'm doing here. I'm going to start out with the free new install. Um, it comes with a 60 day free trial, but once that trial expires, you're now on the free version. So as long as you're within the free version definitions of 500 megs, one instance, so one log server. So this is great for smaller companies or people just wanted to try to start out using Nagios log server. The rest of the web-based installation just has to do with the admin account you're going to be used to initially set up and log into the Nagios log server. Nagios admin is the default admin account. And then we'll go ahead and specify a password and an email address. This email address will be the email address notified when you configure alerts. So you want to make sure you type in something there that it's okay with getting alerts and maybe emails about system failure or log errors. So once that happens, once you complete it and you hit submit, you'll wait a few moments and then it's going to reload the page. And then we're going to be able to log into our new uh, Nagios log server. It's really as simple as that. It's very easy install. Um, if you notice the URL there, it's the same URL we uh, went to before. And we're going to log in with the Nagios admin and the password we specified. So from this web interface, we were able to add our clients, get information on how to add our clients, I should say. So if you notice here on the very first page, the home page, it tells you how many servers you currently have. 
So we just have the one and that's the log from the Nadia's log server itself. Now right here we have some um, shortcuts, uh, window, Windows source and Linux source. And these will be instructions on how to add log sources to our Nagios log server. So we want to add a Linux client or a Windows client. Clicking on these um, shortcuts will give us instructions on how to do that. So it's really quite simple. First, I'm going to do a Linux setup. Um, by default, it'll give you the scripted install. But if you want to do it manually, there are tabs here available for that. So I'm going to do the simple thing and use the script provided. Um, I have my CentOS client ready to be configured, and it's actually a super fast and easy installation. So I'm going to go ahead and head over to my CentOS system, and I'm going to start downloading the Linux script, and it's a shell script. We're going to use curl and download a setup hyphen linux.sh. It's a shell script, and we're downloading from the Nagios log server itself. It's a very fast download, so it should just take a moment to download. Once it's completed downloading, we're going to go ahead and run the script. So we're going to do a bash, the script name, and we're going to name the server with the minus s command and then the port. You will get a warning message about SE Linux, so we're going to go ahead and disable SE Linux um, so we won't have issues running the Linux client uh, for the Nagios log server. So if you do a set enforce and then permissive, it will set SE Linux into um, permissive mode, allowing the Nagios log server client to work properly. Um, the other thing we can do on restart is modify the SE Linux configuration file located in etc sysconfig SE Linux, and we're going to modify it to allow, again, either disable SE Linux or allow it in permissive mode. I usually allow in permissive mode so that way I get the logs. Um, for anything that might have triggered SE Linux to prevent an action. So I usually like to put it in permissive mode and not completely disable that. After that, we can use check config and restart our syslog. So this is going to the utility or the service that's actually uh, being used to send the Nagios log server over the logs from the client to the Nagios log server itself. Here we can take a look at some of the configuration files for our syslog and how it works with Nagios log server. So now if we go back to the Nagios log server, we can see that we now have two clients, right? The Nagios log server itself and the Linux client we just added. And you can see there was like a spike in the activity of the logs. The next we're going to set up a Windows client. The Windows client is almost just as easy. So we're going to use a utility called nxlogs. We're going to go ahead and download it. So I head over to my Windows client. I want to browse to my Nagios log server web interface. And I'm going to go ahead and download this small utility. I'm going to run it. It's a very fast installation. And I'm going to just configure a file, the nxlog.conf file. So the path is given there. I'll put this in the notes as well. The path is given there below. So it's, if you go back to the Nagios log server, it gives you the configuration to add to the um, nxlog.com file. I'm using um, WordPad here because because if you use Notepad, I noticed it would copy the line numbers. So it's just easier to for cut and paste. I found if you use Chrome with WordPad, it saves you the effort of going through and editing the um, copy from the browser to the to the editor. So I'm going to go ahead and save this as a text file, and I'm going to overwrite the existing sample configuration file located in the comp folder. Now once that's done, we're going to go ahead and restart a service. Um, the service is going to be restarted on the command line. You could also do this through control panel and your services, Windows services, but it's a very simple command to just run on PowerShell or your DOS prompt. Um, I'm just going to use PowerShell right here and paste it right in, or you type right in. So it's net start NX logs. So once you install, did the installation, it adds service to your system. We can go now go back to our Nagios log server and take a look to make sure that our third system has been added. So now we have three systems who are sending logs over to our Nagios log server. After that, we can take a look at the interface. The interface is actually very user friendly. Um, of course, the homepage shows 
a small overview of how many systems are being reported, the system health, the administrator account, in the top corner, the email address for alerts and the default sysadmin email address. It also has some basic queries that are predefined, information how to reach out to get more information from Nagios about this product, and the health. And now if you scroll down at the bottom, it also checks for updates. So if you want a quick update to your Nagios log server, you can download it from there. The updates are just as easy as the installation. One of the best features about the Nagios log server is how it presents the logs to you. If you ever looked at a log, you have you know it's just a mess to look at. And you'll sit there and try to scope through it to find clues on what um, issues are being caused, a service to fail or a hardware to fail. You try to find those clues. But Nagios log server really does a great job of um, breaking down the events in the log to more uh, just a more readable format. So it has a nice timeline here, so you can kind of look at the timeline, find roughly when the problem might arise, start doing searches. So it has really good search engine ability, <clears throat> breaking down the problem in the error message itself or the log message. And then you, it's really nice that you could actually search from there. So again, here's our timeline. So events over time. And it's showing you by default all the nodes, all the log sources that are being sent. So if you have three nodes or four nodes, they're all going to be there um, showing logs. So you can start filtering through it. You can start finding just the logs for the systems you are interested in. On the top, there's a quick search option. So you can search easily by error message or by IP address. So I typed in an IP address of one of our nodes, and it's just showing me the logs from that node. And it's in chronological order, so I could start at least scrolling through it to see if I could find an error message I'm looking for. You could increase your search options and start adding more um, search attributes. So I typed in an IP, you could then type in maybe the service name or error message or failure. So some key words to search for when you're doing your search. One of the many features of Nagios Log Server is the ability to create your own customized alerts. So the alerts will allow you to be notified or have an action performed based on a predefined query or search. So for example, in this screenshot here, it shows if Apache 404 error appears, go ahead and send an email out. You can customize a large number of alerts and to do various tasks. After that, we could take a look at the number of different dashboards. You customize your dashboard to your environment. So if you wanna see certain timelines or a certain number of hours, or a pie chart of you know how many logs you're getting. This would be a great place to customize your dashboard. Um, and finally, the administrative tools. It has a wide range of administrative tools to help you organize your Nagios log cluster. So if you have a large number of clusters, it's easy to manage from one central location. You can kind of see where the data is, how much data is being collected. And uh, you can also check your licensing, your mail settings, and it has integration to LDAP and Active Directory as well. So if you want to have centralized authentication on this, you go ahead and set up your LDAP or um, AD integration through the administrative panel here. So if you look really quick, so I have a small, very small setup. It's showing me my statistics for my environment, how much storage I have, how much processing power in my instant status. So this is the log server I am currently on, but again, you can see it as a cluster as a whole. So if you have large environments with many log servers, you could go ahead and organize all your log servers as needed. Administer all your log servers and see the status at any time. Thanks for watching guys. I hope this was helpful. I hope you guys set up Nagios log server and hopefully later on I can do another video on some advanced queries and alerts that you guys could set up. And then you guys have like advanced queries going on just in the middle of the night when you guys were just chilling. <laughs> Alright, so have a good day guys. I'll see you guys next time and subscribe to get updates. Bye.